So today I'm going to talk about traumatic reticuloperitonitis, or it's more commonly known as hardware disease. It's a great topic, by the way. So what it is, is it's the ingestion of a metal object that can settle in the reticulum, and it either irritates or penetrates the lining and can lead to infections in the abdominal or thoracic cavity. And some examples of the metal objects are like nails or wire, and the species that are affected include ruminants, and it's primarily dairy cows. Some of the signs and symptoms, the signs and symptoms, they can often look like other diseases and issues. Um, they vary drastically depending on the severity of hardware disease, but some of the common signs um, between, no matter the severity, are loss of appetite, moaning or groaning when lying down or putting pressure on the sternum, an arched back with a distended abdomen and they're not very active, as well as a decrease in production, and in dairy cattle that would be a decrease in milk production. In more severe cases, the brisket area, it can become enlarged due to the excessive fluid and inflammation will appear. And just come some more signs and symptoms for minor cases, it will have the irritation of the reticulum, a possible infection, as well as peritonitis, which is just the inflammation of the membrane that lines the abdominal organs. And then for severe cases, that's where the hardware will actually penetrate through the reticulum, and it can cause the potential harm to the surrounding organs. As you can see here, the reticulum yeah, point that out with your little... And it's right here, and then the heart's right here, so that's an organ you really don't want to puncture or have <laughs> any damage to. And then it will also have infections in the abdominal or thoracic cavity, if, and if it's not treated, possible death. So for the diagnosis, it can be really difficult to properly diagnose hardware disease. Um, it can easily be confused or observed to be other diseases or illnesses, such as like abomasal ulcers or other um, issues like that. But some possible tests they do to diagnose this is they do a withers test, which it can be seen in this top picture right here. They'll pinch the cow's withers and observe their reaction. A healthy cow, it will nudge the pinch and move <coughs> downwards, whereas a sick cow, it will stay still um, because the downward movement causes them pain. And then here in the bottom picture, they're doing the grunts test, and that's where they apply upward pressure to the sternum region. And in a healthy cow, they're not bothered whereas in a sick cow, they'll grunt, kick, or act uncomfortable. So as far as treatment option goes, in most cases, antibiotics will be given that will help control any infection or possible infection. Um, normally the most common treatment is a magnet. Um, it's the cheapest and it traps and immobilizes the hardware. In um, special cases where you have an extremely high producing or high valued animal, um, they'll do a ruminotomy, which is a surgical approach to the interior of the reticulum to remove the hardware. And then also in some cases, um, if the animal is a market animal or just has little to no value, they'll just go ahead and slaughter it. Um, so a little bit more information about the magnet. It's administered orally. Um, it's given with a balling gun, which is right here in the middle, just like you give them a pill. Um, the magnet, it settles in the reticulum and it attracts any metal that is ingested. As you can see in this picture right here, you can see all the metal objects in that cow's reticulum attracting to the magnet. And it prevents the metal from penetrating, irritating, or leaving the reticulum in its lining. And it's commonly used as a prevention and or treatment for hardware disease. So in hardware disease, prevention is obviously key. It's a lot cheaper and more effective to prevent something instead of treating it once it already happens. So some of the common prevention measures are administering the magnets into the reticulum, and this is normally done around a year of age. Um, also, it's good to regularly check your pastures and fields, as well as check your ground or processed feeds before feeding, just to make sure that there is no um, metal objects in them. And there are my sources, are there any questions? Questions about hardware disease? Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, I know you said common in dairy cattle. Another place you would find it would be feedlot cattle. Because what happens in feedlots, everything is mixed by the ton. You know, it's not like feeding a dog. It's a bucket of this and a bucket of this into this big mixer. And then another thing about cattle, and it's one thing that is a problem, they tend to like get that tongue out and get a whole bunch of feed in and then swallow it and not chew it. Because you know, you'd say, why wouldn't they feel it or something? They go like this, sweep it in, swallow it, because they're going to regurgitate it later and chew their cud, right? So they're, they tend to be shoveling it in, and bolts and wires and stuff from the equipment gets in there. And it's, 
And it's kind of crazy because that reticulum is right next to the diaphragm, and then right cranial to the diaphragm is the heart, okay? So you can get little pieces sticking through the reticular wall, and then you get leakage in the abdominal cavity and set up peritonitis. But if it's a big wire, it could go all the way to the thoracic cavity, like you said, and cause an infection there, or actually literally poke the heart. And uh, very hard to diagnose. It was, I mean, it's interesting, the, uh, the pressure test. The grunt test, and what was the other test? Sternum? The no. Withers test. The Withers test, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of good. It's neat to know what a normal cow reacts, and then what a cow that's got probably a severe case of hardware mm -hmm. disease. If it's got some hardware in there and it's not really causing you problems, they would pass the test just like a normal animal. Very interesting. Out west, there's a lot of that stuff. Put that uh, ball in. How many have used a balling gun on a cow? Anybody in this room? I have a Noah, that's it, and another person? Okay, great. Yeah, it's not for the faint of heart either because you gotta get that thing way down in there before you. Okay, thank you. Excellent, excellent topic. I like, I like these cow topics.